If a TV and a monitor somehow had a baby, I'm not quite sure the logistics of that, but I think this would be it. Hey guys, I'm Tom, a tech chap, and this is the new Samsung M7. Uh, Samsung sent this over for me to have a bit of a play with. They are also very kindly sponsoring this video, but as you guys know, always my opinions are my own. Uh, but I want to give you my thoughts on this, and also just basically walk you through what is this smart TV, albeit without the tuner, and a traditional 4K 32-inch desktop monitor. And it goes a step further, because unlike a regular TV or monitor, we also get built-in Office 365, you can remote access your work computer. If you've got a recent Samsung phone, you can use DeX to have more of a desktop UI for your phone. Then there's wireless dual display, which allows you to use the smart monitor as a second screen for your MacBook or your Windows laptop completely wirelessly. And it also supports screen mirroring via AirPlay 2 on your iPhone or by tapping your phone against the screen. And all this is without needing a PC or a laptop attached. And I think maybe the biggest surprise is that this costs just £400 or $400, which is suspiciously cheap uh, given all the features you get for it. I mean, as I say, it's a 32-inch 4K HDR10 certified display. I'm going to call it a display because monitor doesn't really do it justice. And there's also even cheaper 1080p 27-inch and 32 models of this, the M5, although I haven't tested those, but I think 1080p at 32 inches would be a bit of a stretch. So for me, I think this 4K 32-inch M7 model is the way to go. So this smart monitor has kind of come at a good time because I think most of us have been stuck working from home for such a long time now, but I think space in our homes and our, well, home offices has to be more flexible to maintain a healthy work-life balance. And if you're stuck in front of a monitor all day, which I think most of us are, why shouldn't that be more flexible for both work and play? Now I must admit I was and still am a little bit skeptical about just how often I would actually need these features. I mean I think the vast majority of us would probably already have a laptop or a PC hooked up to our display anyway and from that you can access well the internet and get all the streaming services and all the productivity features that way. And also pretty much any recent monitor can be made smart just by adding a streaming stick like a Roku or Amazon Fire or Chromecast. And those also have streamlined TV style interfaces with all the smart apps you could eat. But I suppose the point here is convenience and that it's all neatly integrated into the screen without the cost or the fuss of setting up a separate streaming device. And for most people who just need a nice big screen for a home office that's good for working and for streaming, I think this could be a great choice. Now I'll get to all this smart streaming stuff in just a second, but I want to focus on what I think is the more interesting aspect of this, and that's the kind of work productivity features. And a standout has to be the built-in Office 365 support, which allows you to access and work on documents from the cloud without a PC or laptop. So there's obvious remote working advantages to this, although I'm not quite sure how often you wouldn't be without your PC or laptop. But if you are using the M7 by itself for working, then trust me, you'll need a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. You've never experienced pain until you've tried Excel with a TV remote. But then again, we're all getting used to the idea of working remotely. Sorry. It also gets Samsung's wireless deck support, uh, which lets you use your Samsung phone to power a PC-style desktop UI with compatible apps for a more office-like experience. Again though, a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard is a must, but you can use your phone as a giant touchpad. And then there's screen mirroring via AirPlay 2 on iPhone, which is really easy to set up. Or if you're on Android, you can use a tap view feature, which requires Samsung SmartThings app to be installed. But you just simply tap your phone on the edge of the screen to set it up. Although sometimes I had to give it more of a whack to activate. And actually the on-screen prompt even suggests a case if you're worried about damaging your phone, which doesn't seem ideal. Wireless dual display basically lets you use the smart monitor as a second screen for your MacBook or your Windows 10 laptop, connecting via AirPlay 2 or Bluetooth respectively. In both cases, connection is really simple. I didn't have any dropouts even when I took my laptop into the next room, and not having to plug in a display cable is obviously more convenient and allows you to sit further away. Compared to a normal wired connection though, the image was nowhere near as sharp, and there was a little bit of lag as well, though this isn't particularly noticeable outside of, say, gaming. So while this wireless display is pretty nifty, I think I'd stick to wired when you can. And then there's remote access, which lets you log into your work PC or Mac from home, and provided that machine is also set up for access, it's a pretty cool idea if you're working remotely without your laptop or PC with you. And you can even remote access a PC in another room if you want to. 
As for the smart TV side of things, well, you've got pretty much every smart app you can imagine. Uh, Amazon, Netflix, uh, Disney, uh, YouTube. We've even got iPlayer and iTV here, uh, which obviously is for the UK. And as I say, this has basically just been lifted off their uh, most recent Samsung TVs as well. So it's incredibly intuitive to use. And obviously you can use this from a lot further away than having to physically use the on-screen display with most monitors. So if you've got this at the other end of the room, or maybe you're a college student with this in your bedroom, you can use this as your smart TV well, everything really from a distance, from the comfort of your own sofa or bed. So aside from not actually having a TV tuner built in, although I'm not quite sure how often you need that anymore, everyone's using smart apps, this is a pretty good 32 inch 4K TV as well. Plus you can use the mic button on the remote to use voice commands. Another advantage of this is the sound quality, which I'd say is in line with regular TVs of this size. It is lacking in bass and some richness a little bit, but it's still better than pretty much any other monitor for the money. So far, so good then, but I do have a couple of little niggling issues with it. And I think one of the areas Samsung has compromised on with this, perhaps in order to get that lower price, is unfortunately the screen quality itself. The colors on this VA panel aren't particularly vivid. Brightness peaks at just 250 nits, which is below average even for a basic monitor. And it's frankly rubbish considering it supports HDR10. And as I say, color accuracy is only mediocre. So it's not really the best choice for graphics professionals or video or photo editors who really need a high quality IPS screen for the best results. But I think a lot of that is kind of missing the point. This is a big, high resolution 4K affordable TV slash monitor, which I think is gonna be great for most people. Yes, we're not getting professional levels of color and also the viewing angles aren't the best, but it's not bad. And for a 32 inch 4K display for $400, yeah, I think this is actually incredible value for money. Also, 32 inches is fast becoming my favorite monitor size, maybe outside of ultrawides, especially if they have thin bezels like this, so they don't take up a ton of room on your desk. And they also offer a lot of screen real estate, so you can have multiple apps open side by side. One caveat of Samsung's do-it-all uh, marketing claims for this monitor, I think is when it comes to high refresh gaming, because unfortunately this is limited to 60 Hertz. There's no high refresh rate here, which is a bit of a shame, but I think again, we have to take into consideration that price. Um, maybe it would have been nice if there was a, a 600 pound option with slightly better colors and a high refresh rate. I would have really liked to have seen this because I think this well, concept is a really good idea, and I kind of wish there was a higher level as well uh, for people that can afford it. But yeah, sadly we are stuck at 60, which again is absolutely fine for the vast majority of people, but if you're an enthusiast gamer, then uh, maybe look elsewhere. As for connectivity, around the back we get two HDMI 2.0s, and also on this 4K M7 model, uh, we get a USB-C port, which also supports DisplayPort 1.4a if you plug in a compatible laptop or PC. And this also allows the monitor to act as a USB hub. It's a bit of a shame though that we're not getting any Thunderbolt 3 support with this, uh, which would also mean that you could charge your laptop out of the same power cable that's uh, what powering the monitor, and also uh, you can have high resolution daisy chaining. There's a few advantages to Thunderbolt 3, but it does opt the price. If you look for even 27 or 32 inch 4K Thunderbolt 3 monitors, then you're looking at least six or 700 pounds. Again, this is 400 and 32 inches, plus you've got all these smart features. Also the stand for the smart monitor is another area I think they've chosen to save some money because while it's stable enough not to fall over, there's very little flexibility to it, it only tilts a little bit and it can't rotate or be used in portrait mode. Plus there's a fair bit of screen wobble. So with all that said, is it actually worth buying this Samsung smart monitor, this M7 model? Well, I think for the average user, yeah. I mean, if you don't care that much about tip-top professional color accuracy and you can get over the slightly iffy viewing angles, if you want a big 4K resolution display, uh, which can act as a monitor and also a TV, and a little bit more with all the smart apps like Office and wireless decks, then I think for the price, this is actually an incredible bit of kit. So the next question then is, if you are thinking about using this for its smart TV features, 
why not just buy a TV? Well, you could do, and I've made some videos about that recently, uh, but then no TV really comes with a USB-C port, which also supports DisplayPort 1.4. Uh, so in terms of the connectivity and also the response times and the modes this supports, it works much better as a monitor than a lot of TVs, especially at this price range. This is a nice combination of small uh, for a TV, but big for a monitor, that kind of nice crossover of 32 inches while having that 4K resolution, a good range of connectivity, reasonable image quality, and so I think for the average user, this is kind of like the best of both worlds. Of course, for similar money, you could go with, say, a Quad HD, so 1440p IPS monitor, which trades this resolution for better colors, brightness, and HDR performance, and then maybe just plug in a separate streaming stick for the smart interface, or of course, just leave your laptop connected. There's always that option. So I think a lot of people, maybe myself included, are thinking that's really cool, but I'm not sure why I would need it. But if you do need it, if you're watching this thinking that's perfect for my setup, then, well, I'll leave a link in the description and I would highly recommend it. But what do you reckon? Could you see a place for this in your setup? And also, would you use any of those smart productivity features like uh, the built-in Office 365 and wireless decks? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys and if you want to see more from me then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Again a big thank you to Samsung for sending this over and also sponsoring this video and I will see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.